I would not wish that on anyone. If yeah. you are not like strong minded and like if you don't have that like self determination and perseverance, I will say you will not last. Because I almost didn't last, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I wanted to drop out at some point. Shalom, hurry up. Coming. Hi guys, welcome back to my grant text. So this is pretty much the channel. If you're a migrant looking to move overseas, if you're already moved overseas, this is your home away from home. Today we have a special guest, one of my oldest friends here in australia actually yeah. so welcome let's have a big round of applause welcome to europa <laughs> yeah. thank you welcome. thank you michelle yeah we, f we first met like back in 2016 16, yeah like i remember that day yeah, very clearly same was it orientation i think it yeah, was, it was very orientation yeah. so like i guess for people to mm. kind of understand mm. So, you know, like when you first come to Australia, you have like your buddies, you're like trying to get yeah. around, you're mm. super excited. Yeah. So I signed up for pretty much everything. <laughs> she did. I did. Yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, I'm going out. Yeah. I'm going to see everything, make sure that I'm fr I'm acquainted. With, yeah, with the place. Yeah, with the place. Mm. Then orientation week came in. They did that circle thing where we had to like say our name what we're studying something like that oh yeah 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 it was a long time ago and i'm like yeah yeah but good times good times it yeah. was tough times you know you were so naive then so fresh to the country yeah and like honestly i don't know what i hope for like from this country really what made you choose like australia anyway actually i didn't choose australia you didn't i didn't so when i was in high school um we had like these people who would come to our school and talk about like you can study abroad and like they would sell like whatever country that they're representing at that time yeah and tell you like the benefits of studying in this country and blah 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 and out of all of them, like we had people from like the US, we had people from Canada, we had people from Australia, New Zealand, yeah. um, which other countries, South Africa as yeah. well. And honestly, the two countries that would stand out to me were Canada and South Africa, really? surprisingly enough. Yeah. One, because I felt like they were within my parents' budget. Yeah. And also it just felt like, the pathway like to getting a job and like getting settled in the country like was easier in those countries you really looked at that yes yeah. compared to like australia australia was like really pricey that was like this is not like within like reach so yeah. i honestly i would have I, I probably would have considered it but i think because of the, the priciness of like the fees and um just like the lifestyle like i would look at accommodation and it yeah. would just be so ridiculous and i would be like no way i would make it there you yeah. know what i mean so i didn't want to come here until oh. so, but then like so now i would go back to my parents and present them with like a list you know yeah, of schools that would be good for me and stuff yeah. and mostly the pressure would be on my dad because he was the one who was like um paying for my school fees yeah. so i really had to sell it like really well and like yeah. the benefits and like i'm like look you can afford this like it's not that bad and then i'll get a job blah blah yeah. blah and just you know i really wanted to like not study in zimbabwe i don't know if that's a bad thing or not <laughs> i don't know but i just felt like my yeah. opportunities of getting a job would be much better if i was not in the country in the, the country yeah. so yeah my dad eventually long story short my dad eventually out of the blue was like yeah i want you to go to australia oh, yeah. and then i looked at it and i'm like can you afford that like truly yeah it's like no I seen I've looked at it like they have like the best education wow. or some of the best of education so it was like yeah Australia. let's do Australia and then you're so visionary yeah I yeah. know honestly we wish even my mom was like are you sure <laughs> like it's yeah. quite expensive because the numbers like that the people were talking they're talking 60,000 or maybe like 40,000 it's yeah. just it's, it's just lot, yeah it's a lot, lot of money, money. Yeah. yeah so yeah. my dad was like kind of the same in a way yeah he told me about australia 
two years before I even graduated. He brought, oh, he won it. So he really won it this so year. So he brought a list of mm. like, you know, the school list occupation stuff yeah. to like, these are the most in demand jobs in mm. Australia. Mm. I was like a naive teenager. I didn't really care to be honest. Yeah. I was just like, I don't know what you brought to me. What what do these papers yeah, even, what mean? Does even mean? Why would I be looking at occupation lists? It's what not for that? me. Yeah. It's like Australia. What's in Australia? I, like, I feel like we were really sheltered growing yeah. up. Like you really didn't think that would be your responsibility to think about occupation. You're like, what's yeah. that? Like your job was to get good grades. Pretty much, yeah, good rates and <laughs> everything eventually else will good... sort itself out. Exactly, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. <laughs> so when, two years later, I ended up deciding Australia by myself. Yeah, in a way, I was like, oh okay. yeah, my dad did mention Australia, and yeah. I looked it up. I was like, oh, cool, weather's nice. Yeah, they have what I wanted to study, which was international business at the time, mm. and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Okay. I didn't even look at that list, and I was like, I sh- probably should have. Honestly, now if let me tell you this. Before yeah. you move anywhere, look at that occupation list that she's talking about. Yeah. Because I think sometimes you blindly go into something, waste money, God forbid, and then that thing doesn't even benefit you in the future when it comes to like looking for a visa or like just money. Yeah, yeah. money too. But can you imagine studying an English degree or arts degree and you're just like coming here and just like, oh, I'm going to be an arts teacher. They're going to kick no me out of the country. To the, the people no offense no, 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 to do like, that. No offense because mm. I like, I would love to have done an arts degree, but me then too. I'll just like, it's not visible yeah. to be honest. Yeah. You want to see what would have benefit. I would have loved to be an interior designer. I feel like yeah. I would have been like, I feel like you're still a superstar. It. Yeah. yeah look i'm doing my ca right now <laughs> no i'm very time poor so yeah that's, that's not really an option yeah. yeah so when did you decide to become like an accountant um so when i was in high school again you have the first two years of high school yeah um you kind of do every subject or at least at my school we did every subject and I think they do that so that you kind of see what you want to do in the future. So there wasn't really much to say, like, oh, it's very broad for me to make a choice. But basically, there's the sciences. Yeah. You can either be a sciences person and then you could either be an arts and finance person. Yeah. yeah. So that's what we had. And I feel like my dad kind of discouraged me to go for the sciences because I was... It was just like, you need to be really switched on for that thing. Like, you need to be really smart. And yeah. I think that was just kind of him telling me that you were actually <laughs> not. not. <laughs> that, that is, you know. Wow. He wouldn't say like, oh, yeah. I think you're dumb. But he was just like, I think you really need to be exceptional at the sciences if you really want to make it. Because it, it takes in like a lot of work and blah, yeah. blah, blah. So, much so he was like, you know yeah. what? I think you would be good as an accountant because you'd manage it better. Mind you, he's also an accountant. Ah, uh, okay. So he was like, I know what an accountant is like. So yeah. And I think he also, for just for like, you know, parents, for his ego, like he wanted like, oh yeah, my, I'm an accountant. And my children are also like accountants. Yeah. So I think, look, maybe that's where he came from. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. But it's funny though, my mom is a nurse. You would think I would have wanted to be that. Yeah. But I didn't because... Like when I would go to work with her, I just could not stomach some of the things I would see so, and yeah. stuff. So I yeah. probably worked like really long shifts. Like I've yeah. never heard of a nurse with like a light shift. Night shift, yeah. talking seven to seven. Like, yeah, it's they really work hard, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. a lot of what I find like now, a lot mm. of Zimbabweans here are either accountants or nurses, to mm-hmm. be honest. Yep. Majority. Yeah. Yeah. Look, you kind of do what's going to benefit your future. I guess people kind of do that based off of what will give me more opportunities in this country. In the future, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, That's especially true. in this country, because these people are looking for people to get, like, who benefit the, the country. Yeah, yeah. So, unfortunately, that's the game. Yeah. I it took a like... completely different path. Yeah, yeah. What made you choose international business and then switch over to marketing? Right. I want to know, like, your thought, like, your thought process when you changed. Really? Because I struggled in, mm-hmm. to be honest, I actually wanted to do an English. Um, degree. degree yeah when I was like oh. 14 15 because I wanted right. to be a writer 
right? I can see you yeah. being a writer. Yeah, right? yeah absolutely. Like, There's a period where I just hated writing yeah. completely, like um, writer's block, everything. I was yeah. like, nah. This is not for me. And I actually mm. went to England and I went to Oxford University. I did a, like a tour. Yeah. Talked to the admissions team. They were talking to me about opportunities and stuff for oh me and stuff God. like that. What an experience. It was a great experience. But yeah. while I was there, I was just like, I don't like England. I do not want to be at this uni. You were the first person I've ever like heard, heard say, say that. Yeah. It was so weird because Mm. All my friends, when um, when I was a kid, they'll be like, Michelle's so obsessed with England. She really wants to go to England. Uh, so then when I went, they'll just like, mm. this is not you know, like, what I want. Like, so when you went there, were you visiting? Did you have family there? Yeah, I had family there. Okay. Not, my friends were like, you're 16. You're about to graduate. Let's yeah. do the college tours. And I was like, yeah. cool, I want to go to Oxford University. Oh, my God. I went there. I was like, yeah, now. Nah, um, it's not it's for not me. Yeah. 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 And, I would say England is fun, but mm. I was just like, I couldn't see myself staying there. Yeah. Weather-wise, I was just like, no. <laughs> I honestly think you would be a London girl, truly. I think I would enjoy it for a short time, but like yeah. the, when you see the weather, you're just mm. like, mm-mm. It's, yeah, yeah it's, that's why I'm saying I, I love Australia, because Australia weather, I'm like, you might be like, why would you consider weather in your decision? Are you talking about all weather? Because look at today. today what is raining. this? <laughs> But then it's like, it's not like, England is like this 24-7. Oh my like, God, Like, it's yeah, almost like, it's always like it. raining yeah. and stuff and just yeah. moody and whatnot. Because the year was like, you have your summer days. Yeah, you have and they're really the summery, okay? 40 yeah. degrees. Yeah, that's what I really wanted. Yeah. So for me, my decision was always like, where am I going to be like comfortable mm. um, weather-wise? But for the international business thing... I loved traveling and I loved like learning different cultures mm. and I did enjoy like entrepreneurial business things. Yeah, you so, are an entrepreneur. <laughs> so for me, yeah. it's like, it was and kind of like a, in a high school, it's like a no brainer for me. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, cool, international business. I get mm. to learn about different, what what I thought was, I yeah. get to learn about different countries, mm. how they operate in business, the cultures. So what would yeah. have been the end goal with international business? Because you were going to study that and then like, which field were you going to be with? I didn't think about that, to be you honest. Didn't. You didn't? I was just would, like, yeah. oh, I'm going to study this and I'll probably just get a job in corporate, yeah, doing like something business admin or something mm. towards with the degree itself. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know that the degree was so broad in itself mm. that I'm just like, oh, okay, yeah, it <laughs> doesn't specialize in anything. So mm. people aren't really interested in yeah. the degree itself. You yeah. Know? yeah. But yeah, that was pretty much me. Then marketing mm. was because, you know, I started a startup. So when did you switch over to like majoring in marketing? Was that the first, second year? Is that when you made that decision? No, no, no. So when we did marketing, mm. that was a prerequisite class. For yeah, me. yeah, I remember. Yeah, it was, was for me first year too, as well. Yeah. So I thought about switching to, it's so funny because I actually did think about this because mm. I did a finance minor yeah, as well, but I thought about switching to a major in marketing. Mm. I was like, I, I don't know about international business, but maybe I should switch on to marketing. Yeah. And I just was like, no, you just, you need to stick through with your initial decision, which yeah. is my first mistake because mm. nobody ever tells you that it's okay to like change your mind, change your mind. Yeah. You can just change, you know, mm. was I like, think it may yeah. be like an ethnic thing as well. Cause they want, obviously they're paying their money for fees and you know how hard things are in Zimbabwe. Yeah. So you really do cannot afford to like change your mind and be like, Oh, sorry. I woke up today. I, decided, I mean, some people yeah. have that, you know, privilege, but not everyone, I guess. That's true. Yeah. yeah. But then I mm. think that's why we always have like those prerequisite classes because mm. you get a year and a half to be able to change Speech your over. mind yeah. easily mm. and it won't affect you at all. Yeah. But yeah, but I just stuck through it. And then once I started the startup, I was just like, oh, actually, you know what? Mm. Marketing is where it's at for me. I Let think, me do my master's yeah. in marketing. Yeah. Good for you. You yeah. kind of saw a clear picture of what you wanted to keep doing for your really? future as well. Mm, I wouldn't no? say that, yeah. to be honest. Like, mm. I was so confused throughout. I just chose something yeah. that I was like, I kind of enjoy doing this. Let me see what happens. Yeah. And then, I guess that's trial and error. adulthood yeah. as well. Like, you don't really know for sure. Yeah. You just kind of, you know, go with the floor yeah the floor yeah. in the gut yeah yeah but how are you finding like accounting and stuff honestly so my first uh like my first role in accounting 
Yeah. It was good. Honestly, to be honest, I kind of fell into it. Like I was yeah. looking for a job after uni. So what happened is I was looking for a job and I was looking for people who were going to take me on without my PR or citizenship, you know, because yeah. most jobs, they tell you, yeah, we take everyone, but they usually put at the bottom there, like, I oh, preferably if you have a PR or citizenship and they kind of just eliminate you based off of that. So you don't really have that many choices, which kind of sucks, to be honest, yeah, because yeah. we probably pay more money for school fees and stuff to get where we are. But anyways... So I actually was just applying for jobs, applying for jobs. I actually used to work at an aged care doing admin when I was in uni. Yeah, Yeah. I used to work at, I'm not going to say it, but I used to work at that place. And it was pretty cool, actually, because it kind of got me an opportunity to apply for a role in accounting within that um, entity whatever you want to call it. And so I did that. Uh, and they actually wanted to take me on. They oh, really cool. did. And then at the same time, I also got another opportunity to work for a firm. So like in accounting, it's different when you work for like one place. It's just that place. Thanks, You're doing yeah. books for that place and stuff. Whereas when you work for a firm, you kind of have different clients. different, clients. Yeah, yeah, which is different. Like you have medical clients, you have restaurants, you have like you just have different, you know, varieties of yeah. things. So that would be usually better for your experience Experience. yeah as compared to that so that's how i kind of looked at it when i got the opportunities when i got both and i was like oh look the other one though i'll say was giving me um because it was during the pandemic when i got the two offers yeah it was giving me the opportunity to work from home three days and I was like, for my first row, I don't really know much. I'm like kind of learning and like absorbing things. Why am I yeah. working from home already? Like you obviously need that supervision as well. Yeah. So that kind of almost got me because I was like, oh, I'll be working from home. I'm that but I'm, yeah. <laughs> I, I would have taken <laughs> I wanted to, but I looked at it and I was like, for my future, I think I'll probably have more opportunities if I work for a firm. Yeah. So that's how I got into accounting. So my first year was pretty if I'm being honest pretty rough because I think I just didn't really like the practice management in the first place like it was just it's just we're just not getting along Along, that well and I wasn't really learning much as I would have loved to and so did a switcheroo oh that's very exciting yeah and would you say like Cause you are working while studying, mm. yeah. How's mm. that actually? Uh, I would not wish that on anyone. If yeah. you are not like strong-minded, and like if you don't have that like self-determination and perseverance, I will say you will not last. Because I almost didn't last. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I wanted to drop out at some point because things really do get tough. Like. It was hard to get a job, even any, like, not even accounting, like, any job just to sustain your livelihood was hard to get. During uni? No. Is it because you wanted to or you, exactly? I couldn't, yeah. It's it's so hard. They make it really hard for people who are not from here. I guess if you don't have, like, I don't know, inside friends or, like, connections of some sort, You're not it's bust for you. Yeah. Like, it's really sad, though. Yeah, it's very interesting because I'm mm. always, like, I understand it from a from both ends, right? It's, like, yeah. if you're coming to Australia or the country you're, you're going to, yeah? Yeah, whichever. They want you to have enough funds for you to, like, study mm. and... Which Stay I did. There. I actually think we all are required. So they look at your bank statements. They yeah. look at everything, right? Yeah. Mm. To maintain it, right? Yeah. And then obviously it's kind of like you're here. You're just here to study. Go back. Was like obviously if I was like no 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 no. <laughs> I'm here to make a like life. To stay. <laughs> I would like to stay, please. And, and that's only totally fine, you know? Like, yeah. if you can contribute to the country and what they mm, need and mm, stuff, mm. it's totally fine, you know, being a productive person in the country. Yeah. But my problem is, like, they make it so hard for people to then earn, like, just a living. A living, yeah. You know? Like, cost of living is very so high. 
So now it's kind but of like, maybe yeah. let's specify when we say they, who do we mean? Because we almost feel like it almost sounds like we're saying there's a group of people who don't want you to succeed. So who is they? I'm just gonna say umbrella, um, <laughs> the government. <laughs> uh, <laughs> umbrella. I don't know if it's them. They actually want people to work. I think they actually. Yeah. prefer if you actually a hardworking person they want a hardworking citizen i know that yeah i think it's just that people here like people who grew up here yeah who have made these friendship circles right yeah within that community and then maybe they went to like a private school yeah. together so they're gonna be like letting on their friends before a random person from Zimbabwe. Like, truthfully yeah. speaking, it's just I think it's very cliquey. That's what I found about yeah. this place. It is. And fair enough, but it's like I'm just here to make a living and get by. Like I'm just trying to survive. Yeah. Can you like kind of make room for me as well, please? So yeah. I can But would you say it's like the same everywhere? Like even in Zim, like with spirals, like connections will get you way far than the regular so it's kind of mm. i always feel like it's kind of like a human it's, trait it's in a way same thing yeah you're absolutely right i yeah. agree with that yeah. yeah but do you think zimbabweans because i want to be honest about this like do you think zimbabweans are not as friendly then like to Ooh. outside like people who are from different countries like coming into Zimbabwe. I don't know, to be honest. I actually think they're quite friendly people. We're quite friendly people. I don't care where you're from. I'm ready to be your mate. Like, I actually prefer to have like a multicultural group of friends. Then I get to know more about like, you know, other cultures and stuff. Yeah. Whereas I feel like people here, some let me know, make an umbrella Rest term, like you yeah, said. But some yeah. people, like, would just rather we'll stay in our, you know, glass house. Would like to keep it that way, please. Yeah. <laughs> no people of colour, no people of different ethnicities. Yeah. We don't want anything different. It kind of makes them uncomfortable to some extent. And they're just like, yeah, sorry, there's no job for you here. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I always feel like for us, like, obviously you went through colonisation and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, and plus, a lot of Zimbabweans do like to, if they can, if yeah. they can afford to, they mm. love to travel, they love to, like, Absolutely, interact yeah. with different people. Mm. I'm speaking from privilege because I know mm. not every Zimbabwean yeah. story is the same mm. as my story. But what I find is, like, the more you are looking outside, you're looking at different viewpoints, the more you accept yeah. it. It was, like, mm. a lot of people here, some of them have never traveled, yeah. ever. And they yeah. don't need to, to be honest. For us, like... <laughs> We have a mission while we're traveling. Yeah. Like, we need to buy something that we can't find at home. Yeah. Or we want to mm. like sh- just look at the area and be Things, like, oh, actually, yeah. I can live here. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, I absolutely, I think definitely traveling does open up people's minds. I think, so for me, I actually have an opinion that more central places like Sydney, New York, Toronto, and yeah. like, you know, London, they have um, like, they're more open to diversity oh, that yeah, way. Yeah. Whereas if like if I were to go to like rural New South Wales or yeah, yeah. a remote area, I'm I don't know how they would treat, you know, an African girl just roaming around. Yeah. I'm not sure I'm not saying anything, but I'm just I'm not sure how they would treat me. I feel like centralized places are more good, like open yeah. to you know because they have been exposed to different cultures different friend groups and stuff so in, i guess in that yeah line of thought yeah, yeah. it's kind of funny because like mm. when i came here people were just like oh do you find it hard to understand the australian accent i'm just mm. like i have not heard an australian accent forever like when i first mm. came i was like i've not heard an australian accent as of yet mm. like all the people i hanged around was just all like international multicultural or it was such uh, a watered down accent right but when yeah. i went to like perth or brisbane mm. i was like they i went to the same country yeah <laughs> yeah it was so different from sydney yeah. do you reckon oh yeah no i think sydney has a lot of like all cultures it's very multicultural and that's why i love it to be honest yeah. because i mean yes i do feel different in some spaces but i don't feel as different because it's different people everywhere yeah. you know I just feel like yeah it's definitely it's got a 
good mix in there. Yeah, and I think it's the gotten way like bag more multicultural. Like, yeah, even because when we first came, like mm. if I didn't see you, I'd only see like such a handful of black people. Mm. Now I'm just like. Oh, everywhere I look, I can find somebody can who's see black. you're trying to avoid them now. <laughs> <laughs> Not even. I'm just like, oh, black friends, you know? But I'm yeah. just like, you just, I'm just like, I'm just seeing more and more like openness. Yeah. Which is fantastic. Which and, is yeah. good. Honestly, it's fun. I even see like, even at uni, I, when I went for my graduation, I seen like a lot of people who look like me yeah. and that was not the case when we first got here. No. Like I would be in a class and I would just you know You're like by myself. And now I love that when I went there, like I actually seen a group of them and they actually approached me. I'm like, of course, like let's be friends. Every time I see a black person, by the way, yeah. I'm ready to be friends with them. Same, like, it's yeah. just like, oh yeah, yeah. what's your number? But I feel like that's also like different universities. Mm. Like some people be like, oh, why didn't you go to Western Sydney Uni? Like you'd have seen. A you know lot that more. would have been a different experience. Yeah, yeah. that'd be way more like um, I think people so color. Too. You know, because yeah. mm. when I went to University of Sydney, I was just like. I'm the only black person here. Really? <laughs> yeah. There weren't, there weren't so many. Yeah. Like, I would see, like, a few, mm. but it was, like, two out of, no like... No way. Honestly, I would yeah. think, because it's University of Sydney, like, it's... Nah. Yeah. Nah, it's, very, it's still very, like, a lit... Mm. Yeah, it is a prestigious university, yeah, we have yeah, to yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah, it was, like, Macquarie, you know, just like, oh, I miss Macquarie Uni. I miss yeah. the same people. <laughs> so, 